Hello, my name is John Nordberg. Now, it is time for everybody to finally understand time. Let me explain to you the secret of time. What is time? Time is a motion. Time is a specific motion that we use to measure all other motions. It is that simple. We compare how fast things move to the specific motion we call time. What must be understood is, unfortunately, the motion we have informally defined as time is the wrong one. This is a, a very simple explanation with life-changing implications. We can create different types of physics by using different definitions for time. When it comes to motions, there are three major possibilities, slowest, fastest, and everything else in between. That is, any of the motions in between the slowest and fastest motions. Time might be represented as no motion. After all, the slowest motion is essentially no motion. Second, time might be represented as a slow motion. This is where relativity is required. Generally, this type of physics is difficult. Or third, time might be represented as the fastest known motion. Here, relativity is not required. There have been five main historical definitions for time. You already know these five definitions. I don't need to explain them for you. I just need to remind you what they are. They are simple. So to recap, time is a motion. It is a specific constant quantity of motion that we use to measure all other motions. Through most of the history, people have treated time as one particular slow motion. Time should be defined to be the fastest known motion. Physicists can create different types of physics using different beginning definitions for time. What is our standard of motion? Through history, we have used one motion to measure all other motions. Historically, we have called one particular motion time. Throughout history, the motion we have used, the motion we have most often called time, has been the sun's apparent motion. However, from a physics point of view, the sun's motion is a bad motion for our definition. The sun's motion should not be called time. For a number of reasons, this motion, the motion of the sun crossing the sky, is not a good physics standard. When people generically use the word time, that name time refers to the sun's slow motion, the slow motion that she makes as she drifts across the sky. By the way, it is her actual slow motion, not this sped up version in my video clip. Sundials have shadows. As the sun crosses the sky, the shadow on the sundial moves. Essentially, the motion of the shadow mirrors the sun's motion. On this rooftop is a spire that forms a sundial. Notice the motion of the spire's shadow. Think of it this way. If you call the sun's motion time, then the motion on the sundial is equal to time. A traditional timepiece has a dial face in three hands. They are the hour hand, the minute hand, and the second hand. First, imagine how the hour hand on a timepiece moves. As the sun appears across the sky once, the hour hand goes around the dial face two times. If the sun's motion is called time, then the hour hand's motion is twice as fast as time. Next, imagine how the minute hand on a timepiece moves. As the sun appears across the sky once, the minute hand goes around the dial face 24 times. If the sun's motion is called time, then this motion is 24 times as fast as time. Next, imagine how the second hand on a timepiece moves. As the sun appears across the sky once, the second hand goes around the dial face 1,440 times. If the sun's motion is called time, then this motion is 1,440 times as fast as time. Again, time 
is a specific motion. However, which motion is it? Is it the sun's motion or the motion of one of these hands? Through history, at one point or another, all of these motions have been called at time. Obviously, this has confused people. Throughout history, all of these motions have been used as our standard for time. All of them have been used to measure other motions. All four of these motions have been called time. Keep in mind, all of these motions are slow, and that is bad. None of them move as fast as the speed of light. Later in history, scientists defined the atomic second to be time. That is our present definition. That is our present problem. As you are surely aware, there is a very slight fractional difference between a solar second and an atomic second. However, these two motions are almost identical. The solar second is almost exactly equal to the atomic second. These two motions are almost identical. Also, keep this in mind. Neither of these two motions travels at the speed of light. There's absolutely no doubt about it. An atomic second is definitely not the same thing as the speed of light. Why is that important? Because scientists now define the atomic second as their definition for time, which is a huge mistake. Future scientists are going to look back at this point in history and laugh at this. It really is that bad. How we will celebrate the new year will be different. We will not define time to sweep over the planet at the rate at which the sun appears across the sky. It will not take 24 hours for the new year to sweep across the planet. Instead, we will define time to sweep over the planet at the speed of light. Light can sweep over Earth in less than half a second. In the future, after the speed of light definition of time is adopted, the entire planet will celebrate the new year at the same time. It is a simple fact. Any motion slower than the speed of light is a bad definition for time because if you move a traditional timepiece, it has a different motion. It develops an error. By using relativity, you can correct for the error. However, relativity does not remove or fix the error. What is the solution? All we have to do is redefine our definition for time to always be the fastest known motion. At this point in history, we call the fastest known motion the speed of light. If at some future point in history, we discover a motion faster than the speed of light, then time should be redefined to be that faster motion. To summarize, we must redefine our beginning definition for time to be identical to nature's speed limit, to be what we now call the speed of light. That is why I call it the speed of light definition of time. Let me recap. Time is a motion. The proof is simple. If your timepiece stops moving, it doesn't work. Time is a constant quantity of motion. The proof is simple. If your timepiece speeds up or slows down, then it doesn't keep time correctly. When you use any traditional definition of time, like a year, a month, a day, an hour, a minute, a solar second, or an atomic second, since the timepiece itself can be moving, then you must use relativity to correct for the error of having a moving clock. However, when you measure motions as fractions of the speed of light, then you do not need relativity. This is a new type of physics. You can't say it is right or wrong just because it's based upon a different beginning definition for time. This new physics cannot be wrong if Einstein's special theory of relativity is right. Or in other words, if Einstein's special theory of relativity is right, then this new physics must also be right. Einstein used a definition for time that speeds up 
and slows down, I just use the fastest motion. If you are comfortable with the idea of the limit in calculus, then essentially this new physics is simply a special case within special relativity. It is the limit of Einstein's special relativity. It is a special case where time has been sped all of the way up to the speed of light. Time could be defined to be any motion. If we use the fastest motion, then we have reached the limit. This is simply a special case. Again, Einstein used a definition for time that speeds up and slows down. Yes, this makes sense when time is defined as some motion that is not the fastest motion. Instead of using any motion in the range of possible motions, in the range of motions that fall between the slowest and the fastest, I simply define time to be the fastest motion. This creates a new, unique type of physics. How do we measure something's motion? We do it in the same way we measure lengths. We compare one object's motion to our standard of motion. We compare one motion to another motion. Understanding time leads us to a new way of measuring motions. Right now, people think in terms of things like miles per hour, kilometers per hour, and meters per second. People think in terms of distance divided by time. Simple. Instead, in this new physics, we will think in terms of how far an object moves divided by how far light moves. To correctly measure something's motion, you take the distance the object travels and divide it by the distance light travels. As a result, now we will measure motion in terms of things like meters per meter, miles per mile, and kilometers per kilometer. The measurement of motions will become the ratios of two distances. The distance the object travels divided by the distance light travels. Any photon of light can act as your clock. The simplest way to think of this is just to think of time as an expanding sphere of light. When your clock moves at the speed of light, then you only have one definition for time. That is nice. One clock, one motion, and it works in every reference frame. The motion of the photon, the motion we now call the speed of light, should be our standard of motion. That motion should be renamed time. Now, by definition, the speed of light and time are the same thing. Whatever is nature's fastest motion should be our standard of motion. Whatever is nature's fastest motion should be called time. There's no doubt about it, and this is a fundamental breakthrough in physics. This is a big deal. It is life-changing.